Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to have Chris Vermelon, one of the best traders in the market and founder and chief market strategist at the technicaltraders.com on our channel today once again. So thank you very much for your time today. And it's always great to see you, Chris. Yeah, pleasure to be on the show, Andrew. I always enjoy our calls. So it seems like you nailed it when you said on our previous interviews last year that you see the market heading for a new all-time high. And as we all know now, all three indexes have made a new all-time high. Now, the question that I think Think most investors may have is is this a true bull rally that will last for another decade or is it another rally that will be followed by a major market crash very soon can you share your perspective on the rally we are seeing uh in the market these days yeah there's definitely a, a lot of layers to the market and if i show my charts i can try and explain some of this so long story short if we look at the the major trend this is the weekly chart of the sp500 going back to 2019 we got the COVID crash. And the, the key here is, I think last time you and I talked, we talked about, I said, I, I think I, I would love to see the SP500 hit a new all-time high. And then from there, however it, it starts to move, we'll start to give us insight to, is this the start of a new 10-year or something bull market? Or is this kind of one last push uh, higher that the market is trying to suck every investor in who isn't in the market, who would get into the market and then reverse and sell off? And so we are, starting to see the signs when we look at the the rest of the market so i like to look at the stock market from a few different angles let's just um let's zoom out here so this is the sp500 if we take a look at the rsp etf which is the equal weighted sp500 meaning instead of giving all the heavy weight to the big techs all 500 companies have the same weighting in it and really the stock market is just coming up to a double top and double tops can be very very significant um it doesn't mean it has to stay below here, it, it can still push a little bit higher. It just needs to be in the vicinity of the previous top. And so this is the reality of the SP500 is really we're just getting up to new all-time highs really in the past week or two. To step back one more layer, if we look at the Russell 2000, you can see they're nowhere near their highs. In fact, they've broken down and they're, they're forming this sideways pause in consolidation that is very indicative of a major market top. Small caps tend to rally first, they tend to sell off first. And the fact that they're not really participating in this, this rally is, is a big red flag. To just kind of look at the market from a really high level, there's four four stages that the market goes through. And if you understand how to identify stages, what to look for and know what stage you're in, it requires a different type of trading or investing strategy. And I believe we are in this, this topping stage. The majority of stocks are just like the Russell 2000 are going sideways here, while a few sectors and the major broad markets that are tech heavy are pushing to all new time highs, masking what's actually really going on. So I believe we're going to be hitting a, a bigger sell-off at some point, and uh, we have big volume spikes. You can see we have a series of big volume spikes and big drops on the SP500 now that we've hit these new all-time highs. And that, to me, is a sign that some institutions are starting to unload. They're lightening their portfolio, really getting their shares out and putting them in the hands of the average investor. I believe right now is the average investor feeding frenzy. AI, NVIDIA, people are just getting sucked into the market and they feel like they're missing out if they don't get part of it. And those are the, the people who are going to end up probably buying at the high and then they're going to panic out at the low three, six, 12 months from now, whenever that is. And they're going to absolutely hate the financial markets. Uh, right now we're in March. We're in the middle of March. Typically we see the stock market want to push higher for another couple of months, seasonality wise. Uh, in fact, this seasonality wise of the SP 500, if you were to stretch out last year's uh, one year chart, it looks just like this. Uh, so the market last year moved just like it typically has over the past 30 years, which says, hey, maybe we are gonna see this market run up into May. And the saying is sell in May and go away. And maybe that's when the market runs out of steam. Uh, we also have the elections in the US that can push the markets higher up into the election. But things are in an uptrend and you really do need to trade with the trend. It'd be ideal to be long these markets, although I think they're getting a little a little overbought. It's uh, jumping a little late now because we've had a very strong run. Another interesting thing that I was really curious is when you showed the S&P 500 chart and you were talking about the volume, correct me if I'm wrong, but you were saying that you see the uh, volume of selling going high, meaning that you think the institutions are selling off and taking the profits. And the rally right now is more in the hand of the retail investors that are coming in at a, a late stage while the smart money is actually taking profits. Is that 
Is that correct? Yeah, that, that's correct. And typically when the stock market gets a little nervous, investors, they tend to move to defensive sectors. For example, uh, XLP. This is one that we've been long. It just wants to keep going up and to the right. But we saw a big sell-off yesterday in the stock market in XLP, which is considered a defensive play. Generally, if the stock market pulls back a little bit and there's some fear, XLP actually wants to go higher because no matter what happens with the economy, we're still going to need toilet paper, toothpaste, all of those consumer staples. When we have a big down day and all of the defensive stocks, even the cloud as well. That to me is just telling me there's some big institutions that are lightening their low, just saying, get me out of equities in general, just start trimming things off. Let's get a couple billion off our plate and just put it out into the public here, let them suck it up. And then they'll do it again over time. And eventually we'll start to potentially see more of these as more institutions start thinking we're getting close to a top and they start doing this. And then eventually it takes over and we start the downward trend and, and then they panic and they all want to get out before the next big wave. And that what's that's what creates a very sharp and a very big pullback. It's very interesting. Because you brought this up, I'm just curious, do you have something in mind that you think might trigger a major pullback in the near future? And I know that you're most focus on the charts. But looking at the charts, is there a major indicator that you really focus on that you feel confident that the market's trend is like changing? I follow price action. I mean, as investors, we all make money if price of our investment goes in the direction that we want it to go. So the moving averages work very, very well for that. And I think you and I actually, you and I talked about the key moving averages. I like the five day, the 20 day and the 50 day moving average. But when you get to look at long term time frames, there is a good way to take Take a look at that and I can actually just show you here on my screen on here I've drawn this little dotted line and so if you're on the daily chart of the indexes this dotted line is is like roughly the 150 day moving average this whole screen here with this four stages and the 150 day moving average is based around Stan Weinstein's theory. There's four stages and from a really high level, if the stock market on average is staying above the 150 day moving average and the moving average is sloping up, then you're probably in a stage two. If price is below it uh, or chopping around it and the, and the 150 days starting to roll over, then you're probably in a big pause or in a stage three topping phase. And then of course, when price is naturally below the 150 day and it's sloping down, then you are in a stage four, a bear market, a decline. So from a big high level, this is a really good way to get a feeling, okay, are we in a rising tide environment or are we in a falling tide environment? Uh, in a rising tide, you can pretty much throw darts at stocks or sectors and do just as good as a, top, a stock picker. Uh, in a falling market, my belief is you don't, you either want to benefit from falling prices. So bet against the market, wanting it to fall, or you have to move to a different asset class, move into uh, potentially the US dollar, move into potentially long-term treasury bonds if, if the interest rates top out and bonds start to move up. So you really need to understand where we are. And this is a really good high level view of where we are. And a stage three is a very difficult stage. Small cap stocks have been in this since uh, March of 2021. So all along, the retail investor has pretty much left the market. They all got hot and heavy with COVID. And then they all lost their shirts in 2021 and 2022. And so that wave is done, but the indexes are much more delayed. They're in the stage three top and they haven't broken down yet. Like most small caps there, the stock index is just kind of clinging on, just kind of inching its way higher. But I do think we're going to see the hammer drop here this year at some point. So you're saying that the individual uh, investors have got out of the market in 2022 and it's mostly the smart money and or the institutional money that's actually keeping the market going up. But do do you still see that there is a lot of cash on the side that needs to be sucked into the market before we see that you know major downtrend come in? Yeah, I think there's a lot of cash on the sidelines. And, and just to take one step back, so when I when I say retail traders, I believe this is a retail driven rally that we're in. There was retail traders, the active traders, people who like have never traded before. They all piled in. They're trading options and stocks. They all got burned and realized the stock market is not easy and they're gone. And so right now, this market is driven by average investors who just want to be part of this rally. They don't want to miss out. And they're they're putting in some more of their life savings and are getting back into it. So the active trader is now gone. And that's, I think, a very important sign that we're also close to a, a late stage of a market because we've just gone through all of them hyping the markets up. And that's what they did in 2020, 2021. They like really boosted things. Uh, so now it's just the passive investor saying, I got to get in. I can't miss this. You know, it's been a huge rally. And so I, th I believe they're the ones actually really propping it up. And the institutions, they are moving into the big techs 
because they want their portfolios to own those for when their investors look on their monthly end reports. And when they want to realize, hey, we own all the top stocks. It's called window dressing. We, we see this all the time. The last few, the last week of the month, we can start to see big funds that have been underperforming quickly sell off terrible positions and move over to the market leaders. And then when they the investors see their statements at the end of the month, they'll be like, well, we must be doing well. We own NVIDIA. We own all the big leading stocks. Meanwhile, it, they just kind of purchase them to, to kind of mask the other positions that they had that failed. So because they keep rotating into these leaders, they keep driving the leaders up, the big tech, and that keeps the market kind of squeezed and juiced higher as well. So there's a lot going on. And when the music stops, though, I mean, that's when people are going to be shaking their head going, I can't believe, you know, how quick it's dropping. I can't believe how much I've lost. So that's what I'm worried about. That's what I'm trying to educate people on is understand we, I think, are close to the end. Protect your capital because we could see a 30 to 50 percent market correction in the SP 500. And that is going to be devastating for most people who, especially those who are oblivious to it and don't even know that it's possible. There's it's so many people are just out to lunch with the realities of the markets. Another question that I've, I'm really curious is, you know, there, there's the uh, artificial intelligence hype and we see crazy rises in stocks like NVIDIA, SMCI, you know, most of the semiconductor companies. But for an investor like you, does this period right now that we are in feel somewhat really similar to the melt up that we had right before the dot com bubble has popped. I mean, I feel it. I've had I've had these feelings surge through my body a, a couple times where I'm like, wow, this feels like the dot com bubble. I mean, I know it's not quite the same, but a bubble a bubble is a bubble. They have a very similar feeling when people just keep piling into stuff. And I am seeing people who have never bought a stock before pick up their their phones, download an app, and boom, they buy Nvidia, and it's their first stock they ever bought because their friends have it. That is to me is like, okay, these are the last people to get into the markets. They're the ones who buy the highs or near the highs, at least. Yeah. I feel like we're in a bubble phase. It feels a little bit like the, the tech bubble. It also feels like the Bitcoin bubble. I mean, it just feels like a bubble in general, which to me is a top. It's people are piling in totally blind to the risks they're taking on. And right now we are in this stage three top. It's shaded red because there's not much more upside potential in a lot of asset class. Whatever you put to work right now, you're putting you're putting it in the market at what I believe is the highest risk with the least return. We want a stage four decline. We want a financial reset. And then we can reinvest capital. Not only will we have protected our capital, but we should have more capital because we can profit from falling prices. But once the market is cleansed out and nobody wants the markets, is nothing but bad news and layoffs and all kinds of terrible stuff will be in the news. That's actually when we'll be like drooling over these opportunities to pick up stocks with huge dividends, to buy companies, equipment, um, whatever it is, real estate. And there's going to be all kinds of opportunity. The problem is people don't realize they're buying in the red zone. Peak risk, they need to wait, I think, before you implement any big amount of capital into this market. I know you're really focused on the charts and the trends, but do you have any thoughts or concerns about the Fed fund rates this year where you know they're talking about having a rate cut maybe in the mid or uh, the second half of this year? But we're just curious to hear what you thought about you know the Fed fund rates. We have the inverted yield curve and the unemployment numbers kind of rising. Does that concern you or do you kind of look into those uh, indicators as well. I don't lose sleep over it. I don't really actually pay attention to it. I do think people are way too sensitive with all that data. Like they come out and say what we, ex what I, I would believe they would do. And, and people just go completely haywire for a whole day and they move port, change their entire portfolio just because the Fed says something. I mean, that to me is you're just pure speculating on news and emotions. When the Fed actually cuts, like say that first quarter basis point, whatever they cut, it's so tiny. It doesn't change uh, anything really in terms of business businesses or their earnings. I mean, it's going to be so tiny. But the big changes is the sentiment shift. They're going, okay, well, we're actually now in a maybe a weakening environment. And now the Fed's starting to cut rates. That is going to tip the scale emotionally. People will start to maybe be a little more nervous. I don't think the Fed is going to cut anything until the stock market starts to see a lot of pain. I don't think we're going to see any rate cut until there's some blood in the streets in terms of falling prices, people panicking, 
And that means we're probably going to see a pretty big pullback first before that happens. So uh, I, the timing, I think, is actually in line. I believe we're going to probably see the stock market top, you know, in the first half of this year, but it could be next uh, second half of the year. And if it falls fast enough, yeah, we could get that first quarter basis point, which will really change the tide. I think the sentiment, mind shift, I will, I will then be like, okay, we are headed towards a stage four. We're probably going to start to see this market pick up speed to the downside. And who knows if that lasts like two or three years, like the the tech bubble uh, that was like a multi-year bear market or if it's just going to be a quick flush down like 2008 and then find a sharp bottom we don't know so that's very interesting because you know i shared with my members and i made a video that i think the fed will you know cut the rate only if the economy gets really really bad because you know they've been raising the fed fund rates to you know pull down the inflation and why would they suddenly cut the rate again right but i, I totally agree on what you're saying that's i think that's a great insight with this market right now it's it, the market is rallying uh, a lot of people have concerns about a pullback. Some say that the AI uh, hype has just begun. So there's going to be another, I guess, a squeeze up or a melt up. But in your case, um, how are you preparing for the market? So do you have a lot of cash on the side? Are you on the wave of the uptrend of the market and actually uh, in a position and trading the stocks? So right now, I mean, we just closed out uh, a couple of weeks ago, our, our NASDAQ position. We had a nice 15% run from last November. So the other half of our portfolio is long the SP 500 right now still. So we're, we're, we're taking part of this, this market rally. Uh, we have 50% of our portfolio sitting in a cash type of position. It generates daily interest and pays out a monthly dividend so we can generate some cash flow and, and, and continue to grow our cash on the side. So we're, we're one leg in one leg out, you know, trying to protect ourselves because this market's starting to run out of steam. We've hit our targets on the the NASDAQ side. So if the market pulls back a little bit and then starts to run higher again, we will be getting back into the NASDAQ, but it has hit all of the things that we needed to say, okay, you know what? 15% gain. This is where we pull the plug. Typically the stock market runs out of steam shortly after, has a bigger correction, and it'll give us a new opportunity to either get in back in for the next run higher, or we actually just move to a different asset like the US dollar or potentially bonds, which will go up as the stock market falls. So yeah, we're taking part of this. We're half in, half out, very cautious, uh, very conservative position here, just letting the market do its thing. Thank you very much, Chris. I think today we covered a lot of very, very important questions that I, I would be you know, very curious as an investor as well. So again, I want to thank you very much for your time today. And I'm sure that the people who are watching this video has learned a lot as well. So thank you very much, Chris, again. And I would love to have another interview in 2024 as the market kind of either goes up or has a major pullback. Sounds great. As always, a pleasure and anytime. All right. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.